Good morning, everyone. Myself, Dr. Imrati Kumari, working in the Department of Mechanical Engineering, MBM Engineering College, Jodhpur, Jainaran West University. In the last class, we have discussed about the governors. In the, this class, we start a new topic, brakes and diameter. Function of brakes and diameter are very similar. The primary function of brake is either to bring to rest a body which is in motion or to hold a body in a state of rest or of uniform motion against the action of external forces or couples. And the primary function of diameter is to measure the forces or couples which tend to change the state of rest or of uniform motion of body. The difference between a brake and diameter is often one of the purpose rather than the principle. The principle is same, but the arrangement which is used as a brake may frequently be made to serve as a diameter with the addition of force measuring devices such as a dead weight and a spring balance. Then the classification of brakes. Air brake. Air brake are used in trucks, buses, trailers, and semi-trailers. George Westinghouse was first developed a air brake for use in railway service, and he patented a safer air brake on March 5, 1872. Then the hydraulic brakes are come. The hydraulic brake is an arrangement of braking mechanism which uses brake fluid typically containing ethylene glycol to transfer pressure from the controlling unit. In 1980, Malknon Loeb developed a hydraulic brake system. Then the electrical brakes are come and the electrical brakes are used in electrically driven utilities and machines in industries and mainly in electric automotive such as electric lockers. And these were designed as an alternative to the conventional braking system of applying friction over the wheels to slow things. Then the electromagnetic brakes are operate electrically but unlike eddy current brakes transmit torque mechanically then the mechanical brake in the mechanical brake the friction force is applied by giving pressure on the surface of drum or disc it may further divided axially brake and radial brake as per the direction of force acting on the drum radial brake may internal or external then the, according to the shape of friction element it may further divided into block brake shoe brake band brake and disc brake then the disc brake is usually made of cast iron reinforced carbon carbon or ceramic matrix composites this is connected to the wheel and to the axle the, to stop the wheel friction material in the form of brake pads mounted on a device called brake caliper the brake pads is forced mechanically, hydraulically, pneumatically, or electromagnetically against both sides of the disc. Then the material of the brake, the coefficient of friction should remain constant with change in temperature. It should have low wear rate. Brake material should have high heat resistance because there is the friction and due to friction there is the heat dissipation and brake material should have high heat efficient capacity brake material should have adequate mechanical strength and it should not be affected by moisture and oil simple block or shoe brake the systematic representation of the block or shoe brake with a single 
shoe brake is shown in the figure A and B. In the figure A, the clockwise rotation of brake V and in the figure B, this is the anti-clockwise rotation of the brake V. It consists of block or shoe which is pressed against the rim of removing brake wheel drum. We have applied the folds P at the tip of the lever. The block is made of softer material than the rim of the wheel. This type of brake is commonly used on railway trains and tram cars. The friction between the shoe and wheel causes a tangential force, tangential braking force to act on the wheel which retarded the rotation of wheel. The block is pressed against the wheel by force applied to one end of the lever to which the block is rigidly fixed as shown in the figure. The other the end of lever is pivoted to fix fulcrum O. So there is the length of the lever is L. One end is fixed to the fulcrum and the another end there is the force P applied. At the distance X from the fulcrum, we have mounted a block on the wheel. When the wheel come contact to the block then the friction force acting and then the tangential force are in the also acting on the upward direction force p applied at the end lever the rn is the normal force pressing the brake block on the wheel R is the radius of the wheel and 2 theta is the angle of contact of the block. Mu is the coefficient of friction and here Ft is the tangential braking force or the frictional force acting at the contact surface of the block and the wheel. So the frictional force Ft is equal to coefficient of friction into normal force is equal to mu into r1 the braking force on the drum is equal to frictional force into radius so the braking force on the drum tb is equal to mu r into r if the pivot lies on the line of action of ft at fulcrum o where a is equal to zero then the force at the tip of the lever p into the length of lever L is equal to reaction force Rn into the distance from fulcrum X. So the force P is equal to Rn into X upon L, which is valid for clockwise as well as anti clockwise rotation of drum. In the set another way, the, the reaction force Rn into distance x is equal to P into L plus mu into Rn into A. If distance x is equal to is less than or equal to mu into A, if the rotation of the drum is reverse, it is made anticlockwise. And then the force P is equal to Rn into x plus mu into A divided by L. When the direction of rotation is changed, the moment of frictional force now will be opposing the actuation force and hence greater magnetic force is needed to create the same contact pressure P. Then the shoe on which this is prevailing is known as trailing shoe. Then the simple block or shoe block is continued in the above calculation. It is assumed that normal reaction force and friction force act at the midpoint of the block. However, this is true only for small angle of contact. When the angle of contact is more than 40 degrees, the normal pressure is less at the end and then at the center. In that case, mu has to be replaced 
by an equivalent coefficient of friction mu and that is written by mu dash is equal to mu into 4 sin theta by 2 divided by theta plus sin theta and here theta is the 2 theta is the contact angle with the blow so the theta by 2 is the half so theta is the half contact angle with the blow then we have taken a problem. A spring operated pivot shoe brake is shown in figure 5 and is used for a wheel diameter of 500 mm. The angle of contact is 90 degree and the coefficient of friction is 0 0.3. The force applied by the spring on each arm is 5 kN. Determine the braking torque on wheel. Here, the friction force on the lever, the force applied on the lever P is equal to 500 Newton. The diameter of the wheel D is equal to 500 mm, so radius is to 50 mm. Coefficient of friction mu between the block and the wheel is 0 0.3. Assuming rotation is clockwise, the various forces acting on the block is shown in figure. 5a angle of contact in more than 40 degree then the coefficient of friction mu dash is equal to mu into 4 sin theta by 2 divided by theta plus sin theta substituting the value of theta is equal to 90 degree mu dash is equal to 0 0.33 for the left hand side block taking the moment about the pivot of one the force f into l plus mu dash r n1 into r in minus 0 0.05 is equal to r n1 into a here f is equal to the force at the tip of the lever 500 newton mu dash is 0 0.33 and the radius r is equal to 0 0.25 meter and the fulcrum is mounted from the center at a distance 50 mm so r minus a and that is equals to R n1 into 0 0.4. So the R n1 is equal to 14970 Newton. For the right hand side blow, taking the moment about the O, the force F into L is equal to mu dash R1 into R minus 0 0.05 plus R n1 into A. So the force R n2 is equal to 10730 Newton. So the friction breaking torque Tb is equal to mu dash into R n1 plus R n2 into R. So Tb is equal to 2120 Newton into meter. Thank you.